Hello and welcome to the Arcade Saga. My name is Elkan Wiersma, also known as EJ, to make it a little bit easier for a lot of people. Uh, but anyhow, so welcome to this video. This is actually a, a request. It's uh, basically an update on my slipper Arcade. And uh, normally yeah, I will uh, put the request in the screen and, and as you can see, uh, YouTube made uh, the ch your channel name uh, basically disappear because when I first uh, read the uh, request I saw your channel name and then it changed to user uh, something with a sort of code so I apologize I don't have the uh, your channel name but I like to mention people that do the these uh, requests so make it a little bit more personal uh, to show my appreciation for uh, the requests which I uh, also do like but anyhow so that's why uh, your channel name is not uh, complete in the screen. I don't know why. I couldn't find out uh, what happened there. Maybe you, you change it or maybe my uh, account my, doesn't uh, let it show up uh, properly. So I apologize for that. Anyhow, I just wanted to get that uh, out of the way. So yes, uh, well, obviously a very nice request. I thought, yeah, we're going to do this. Uh, it took me a few months. That's basically because I have a lot of uh, subjects to film. But uh, so, so sometimes you need to wait a little bit longer for a subject. Uh, um, but yeah, that's how things go because uh, there's always something to talk about with these arcades, I think. And uh, but anyhow, yeah, let's do an update. I do have a sort of care guide. Uh, it's a care collab actually on uh, the slipper arcades already. I will uh, link those videos in the in the end of this video. So if you want to check it out. And you basically uh, asked about the Paphia pedalums. I did include my Pragma Pedium over here, the big one. I only have one, so I made it basically my slipper arcade update. And we're going to have a look at that one, especially on the roots, because about a month or a half ago, we uh, did a big uh, repath on that one. So it's, it's nice to see if we already can see some new roots extending in, in the bigger pot. So that will be later on in this video. And uh, yeah, so I, uh, I'm going to talk about them a little bit. I will show you as well in this video where I do grow them because, well, let's start with, uh, with the lights. I use an LED light, a cool white, fairly uh, close above these guys because the lights are not that strong. Uh, if you, yeah, uh, it, those are not actually uh, grow lights. So because they are a bit cheaper and you can imagine that in my uh, arcade room, my greenhouse, I need quite a lot of light. So to save a little bit on the lights, uh, actually quite, quite, quite a lot, um, I use uh, LED lights. So I have them in my video description as well, if you, so you can check them out. But I found that of all my arcades, the slipper arcades do get uh, the less amount of light in compared to basically the rest. Even my Mazdevelius who are behind the camera, you cannot see them. I think those are even getting a little bit more light than these ones. These are sitting really in the back of my arcade room. I have a window, but they are the furthest away of that window. So they do get a, a bit of daylight, but yeah, it's even hard to measure, I think. But um, yeah, mostly uh, grown on the lights and I think they do really well. I didn't clean them at all, so they are very shiny looking uh, because they are, they are, I think, quite healthy. Um, the thing that I did change and I did also talk about on my, uh, on my channel, it's about a few weeks ago, is my fertilizer and especially the vitamins. And who knows but uh, i have bigger leaves on them and we will show them uh, go by uh, them one by one so we can show them in depth but uh, they start to do uh, even better than they already have so there is a combination in the fertilizer with the vitamins with the seaweed that basically works for them because they are doing wonderfully well so that's a bit of um, light levels. Well, uh, feeding levels, it's the same as the rest of my orchids for an exception of the catechetum types, the vendas and the cymbidiums. Those do get more fertilizer than every orchid that I have in here, but the rest does get the same levels because I will not uh, mix up uh, different amounts of fertilizer per watering for every sort of genre on orchids that I have here because it will take up too much time. I just don't want to do it. 
and I think it's not necessary because uh, overall my arcs do well and this uh, this group of slippers uh, does well as well so why change it in summer they do get around 80 up to 100 parts per million per watering so a little bit of feed and in winter it's uh, well it's a very if it's very cold it's only about 30 uh, parts uh, per million it may go up to 50 on a uh, bit warmer brighter days but it's very very low i am a strong believer of weekly weekly uh, so a weekly fertilizer every single week that's uh, that's basically uh, what is meant obviously by that expression you may hear it uh, more often some uh, growers do not like it they cannot work with it i have a feeling that i completely understand uh, why uh, some orchid uh, growers, as myself, use that expression. And if it wasn't clear already, uh, I grow all of these guys in a self-watering setup. So I use inorganic media. Uh, and my preferred uh, uh, inorganic media is pumice these days, the bigger pumice I like to use for, uh, for this type of orchid because they have fairly big roots. But I also like to mix up, I see here a little bit of uh, the smaller uh, pumice that was basically me, me testing out if there is a ratio that I do prefer more than another one, another setup basically uh, with the media, but I don't see any difference. So generally speaking, I will, uh, will use the pumice and more often the bigger pumice here and there, a little bit of the smaller. Why do I do that? Because these are mostly terrestrial orchids. So they do like to grow in a sort of uh, moisture, which not contain that much air. So therefore I, uh, I like to uh, give them not too much air in the pot. But I also will not seal it, if you know what I mean. Then the, I like to have a little bit of air in there. But like I said, these are known to be a terrestrial in, in the main. So therefore I, I like to mix it up a little bit um so yeah but let's go over them and like i said you will see different potting medias i also have set up my uh, second camera so we can do the close-ups a little bit easier and i'm going to start with uh the oldest one that i have and this is that's the uh, um Pedalum blackjack the name was uh, a bit uh, uh, for a second uh, away but it's there it's the blackjack and it's beautiful it has this beautiful dark fairly rot uh, 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 dark red color I should say let's uh, do a close-up of the bloom look at this it's absolutely beautiful and I really like the stem as well I'm not sure if it does show up at the, but it has the teeny tiny hairs on the stem so you can really feel them it's kind of nice and this is just done blooming so I have two spikes on this one and quite some leads actually so maybe I do have um, more coming i'm not completely sure but i definitely have two directions of growth and i already have a new growth over here in the back on this one this is a new growth starting i have some sinting in there because this one was getting a little bit too less light and then they start to climb and then those roots i hope you can see them just above my finger uh are above the media and they really do not like to grow aerial so therefore i uh, like to put in some syntic to give them a chance to go inside of the media and uh, let's see if we can take it out so we can have a bit of a look at the root system uh here we go yeah i'm sorry for the glare it's not much i can do about it but i will turn the pot around and hopefully you can see quite a lot of roots you see even some on the bottom there and this is the back of the pot whoops I'm sorry here's my camera there we go so for this one I used a mixture of small pumice with Cintiq and like I said this was the oldest oldest one that I have and I'm just one uh, just like I said I like to start and to uh, test uh, things so I did uh, test some media and this one uh, really uh, enjoys it grows very well and I had it a little bit too low on the shelf and then it starts to climb so that's a good indication if you have a puffy pedalum that likes to to climb let me uh, show it one more time in this camera so it grows up like this sort of out of the pot most of the times that means it doesn't get enough light so it should stay on the same level um, 
generally speaking, of course, but that's what I see with my above your pedalums. So yeah, as soon as they start to climb, I'm, I know that I need to give them a little bit more light. Basically what I'm doing, if I have one shelf with different heights of plants, because the one is bigger and the other one is smaller, the smaller ones I like to uh, put a uh, empty uh, uh, outer pot, a planter under, underneath it, like uh, this. I don't know if you can see it. Yes. Oh, you can obviously see it. I'm sorry. But like this, so it, I, uh, I can uh, grow them a little bit higher on the same shelf as the other ones. It's just a little bit easier. The only thing you need to watch is don't knock them over, of course. So this was, uh, this was uh, yeah, the first one I have it for years in my collection. It does say the last update was, uh, reporting date was 2018, but I had it before that. And this one as well. This is my American uh, Hybrids, it's called. And its original tag is on the shelf. But yeah, this is the American uh, Hybrid. And this one is not blooming yet, obviously, as we can see, but I don't see any buds coming yet. But it should bloom, it uh, does bloom every year. And as you can see, it's quite becoming quite a plant, which I really uh, like. And I do see several new growths. So let's, uh, let's have it uh, on this camera, so we can do a bit of a close-up. So as you can see, we have and the beautiful speckles here. I, I really love it. it. Makes it look so nice, so beautiful. So yeah, I have it, uh, like I said, every year in bloom, but it's not blooming yet. We have a new growth here. So I don't know why it's not in bloom yet, but it may come. I have a sort of leaf here inside. It's not a sheet. So maybe if that is mature on this growth here, then it may be big enough. Or this growth, can you see it? Yeah, this is a fairly big one. And that is also putting up something. Maybe that's a sheet. No, actually, that could be a sheet. I cannot get it in frame, but there's something happening in there. <laughs> so yes, that's uh, something to look forward to. Let's get it out of the pot. I need to put it down just for a second so I can grab the inner pot. So we can have a look at the root system. This, this one also likes the setup very much. Look at that. A lot of roots. Yeah, there are the leaves a little bit in the way, but you can see here, obviously, we have quite some roots here. I don't see necessarily ones coming out of the bottom of the pots. <laughs> and it's better because otherwise I do break them most of the times. So let's keep those roots in the pot. That's a good idea. <laughs> But anyhow, this one uh, is doing well as well. Sort of same mixture, small pumice with some uh, Cintiq and a top layer of pebbles. That's to uh, keep uh, it evenly moist so that we don't get this top dry layer. And uh, like I said, this one also likes self-watering. And to be honest, all of my slippers do very well in a self-watering setup, to be honest. I already said that, but <laughs> that's how I like to grow them. Uh, let me uh, grab this one. This is a fairly new one. I think I have it for two years now in my collection, and it's currently blooming. It has this one, one spike, also a bit of hairs on there. Not sure if you can see it. And it decided to uh, put out two blooms. Look at that. Fairly big blooms if you compare it with my hand. A beautiful, nice white and a light green in there with some speckles on the sepals. There, but yeah, fairly big. It's absolutely beautiful. And lo and behold, we have another spike coming. There it is. And look at the size of these leaves. This is the newest growth. It really starts taking off, as you can see, hopefully. This is also a new one. I think this is the previous one. It looks like a new growth. Well, actually it could be, I'm sorry, I need to look. Well, this is the oldest one here. This one did bloom, but look at the leaf here, how much bigger this is. So yeah, this one is, uh, is doing very well. Let's uh, switch to this camera so you can have a bit of idea of the overall size of the plant. It looks really, really well. 
And this, I can see this is fairly new because this has the darker pebbles, the more gray blackish pebbles that I uh, like to use the, nowadays. And it really feels compact in here. So yeah, here we go. This has the smaller and bigger pumice, like I talked earlier about, what I like to use nowadays, but it doesn't matter that much. They, uh, they do well in, in both setups so far. So yeah, like I said, they really, uh, really, really like to grow in the cell watering setup for me. They really start taking off. I have no setbacks whatsoever if I repot them from uh, moss or bark. So I think it has to do with the pH, because the pH, generally speaking, with the inorganic media, is a little bit higher than uh, with bark and moss. Most, not all, but most of, uh, of quite a lot of uh, slipper orcas do like, have the tendency to like a pH that is a little bit slightly, slightly higher than most of our orchids. So that's around 6.5, some even up to 7. And, and I use this calcium magnesium based powder product that I uh, talk about in, my, in, for example, in my fertilizer video to keep the pH uh, up. And I think they really like it, uh, like that, uh, that, that higher pH, so to speak. So um, let's see how we're going to do this, because now it's going to be a little bit tricky. But here we go. And whoops, you see? <laughs> but yeah, there's a little bit of spike falling off. That was an old spike, so it doesn't matter. So this one, this is probably, yeah, this is the smallest that I have. Let's go over to the, this camera. So you can see it in comparison with my hand. This one is, uh, yeah, the smallest, like I said. And I hope you can see this. I have this new growth over here, uh, wrapped around sphagnum moss, and it's tied to this stake over here. This one didn't get enough of light. So it did basically started to climb, which I talked about earlier, and it did fell over. So I now did, um, get it sort of uh, supported with the uh, with the stick and some uh, syntic around it so those roots the nubbins can start growing again and hopefully uh, will start producing roots and on the other side it also has a new growth that is nicely uh, above the media so that should be fine so that's two new growths and in the middle whereas this is the oldest uh, part of the plant, a mother plant, also does give another new growth I see now. That's that little green leaf here. <laughs> so that's the third new growth. Let me quickly check. I do not see, no, not, I'm not seeing any uh, signs of spikes yet, but as you can see, I obviously did um, bloom it before. And just let grab this one. I need to stand up because otherwise I knock things over this is something special i think they all are special but whoops don't knock them over here we go so this one this is a pinocchio the alba i did uh, buy uh, at a open house from landsbergen and this is the orchid the original the mother plant i should say with this very long spike that is curling up a little bit this one and but look at the leaves. This is the, uh, like I said, the mother plant. Let's go to, uh, no, I think it's easier on this camera for now to start. So this is the oldest leaf and this is the newest. Look at my hand and <laughs> the leaf. This one is doing so well. This is also a leaf of that growth. It's doing absolutely beautiful. And yes, it's working on a spike. So this one stopped blooming. It's sequential. So this, I did repot it, it didn't sk skip a beat blooming wise it just kept on blooming for over a year i think even a year and a half i just constantly did get new blooms and then you know it's yeah it stopped blooming it almost looks like a it's still green the spike so i leave it on there who knows if this starts to bloom maybe the same hormones go to this spike again and maybe start blooming again i don't think so but you never know as long as it's green, I leave it on there. But anyhow, it can bloom for, for quite a long time and it's absolutely beautiful. So let's, uh, let's have a close-up of the new spike here. 
and these beautiful leaves I like the, the leaves as well structure on there and look this this one is absolutely beautiful if you compare it with this leaf from the oldest the mother plant and then we have this one yeah it's absolutely amazing this one like i said took off as well so let's have a look inside of the pot and there you go a lot of roots and this is the back of the plant so yeah, it's roots everywhere. This one is doing, uh, like I said, really well. And it's beautiful. I really like this because this one is really showing me, us, that it really appreciates the setup. It's growing so wonderfully well. So yes, you guys, I apologize for breaking in in my own video, sort of. But I uh, did forget while I was uh, filming the rest that I uh, promised you guys that I want to do an update on the roots of this uh, big one. Uh, the, the only Pragmopedium that I have, and I have the name tag just in front of me. So this is uh, the one. And so yeah, I'm breaking in because I obviously want to do it, of course. I'm very curious myself. So let's, uh, let's uh, take it out. Uh, this has been in this pot for uh, about a month, a month and a half. So yeah, you can see it's absolutely uh, a type of uh, semi-hydroponic setup <laughs> let's put it over here and whoops let's have a look if we have some roots yes we have a root here beautifully oops and there you can see it at least one new root beautifully uh, taking uh, this a new bigger pot <laughs> quite a bit bigger the previous one and I thought I saw another one. No, not yet. So at least one. So yeah, this one will uh, be an update. I think in, in next year, of course, we're almost there. Speaking of which, Christmas is uh, around the corner. I am uploading this on the 24th of December, if I'm correct. So yes, um, Christmas is around the corner. And I, uh, I will, um, I will uh, do an, a blooming update next week. A, a bit of a special one because uh, and then we had a Christmas and then we are uh, almost at the end of the year. It's all, uh, already uh, there. It's around the corner, like I said. <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to it, you guys. I we had a bit of snow and I enjoy, enjoyed it, but I'm I'm really uh, I really like the warmer weather, more sunshine, more actually daylight. I like my plants. I like it a little bit lighter, but yeah, anyhow, I don't want to complain, but uh, yeah, I'm just being honest. Yeah, I'm not really from the, from that cold and wet weather, which yeah, I do live in the Netherlands. We have a lot of this, but we also have beautiful, uh, we can have beautiful summers, beautiful spring. So every time a new year starts, I like to think, well, this is the year where we do get a new spring, where we do get a new summer. So uh, I have something to look forward to. Uh, like I said, I will do uh, at least one more video. I think I do one more video this year and then uh, I will see you in the next year. But in between, of course, you guys, I really want to wish you a very nice Christmas. I'm not completely sure if you do something um, Christmas related. Uh, personally, not really. I like Christmas, but I, 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 for us, it's more a little bit of a free time because the... the wildlife center uh is a, it's a little bit easier going on that's my daily work for those who don't know we uh, we have a uh, wildlife center here so uh on the back of uh back of the house <laughs> there we have the center and uh it's a really nice nice uh, work of course but it's very busy we are open every day uh, also on the holidays because you never know some things might happen with our animals outside and they need help so they are always uh, welcome to come in uh, and that's between 9 o'clock in the morning until 9 o'clock in the evening. So for 12 hours a day, I need to be home or at least my husband. Uh, and in some rare cases, somebody else. But anyhow, with, with Christmas, it's a, most of the times a little bit easier. Just, so for us, it's not really Christmas, but it's just a, a bit of free time. Um, but anyhow, I, I hope uh, nonetheless you have great days. And thank you so much. I really enjoyed doing this uh, uh, request. I hope I did answer all the, the questions you have. 
If you're watching this and you also have a sort of request or some questions, please leave them in the comment section below because I really like to make videos that I know you uh, viewers like. So thank you for that and obviously thank you for subscribing, giving it a, a thumbs up and maybe you want to share this video which would be awesome. And like I said, I hope to see you really, uh, really soon again on my uh, last video of this year. Bye bye.